Hello, people. Welcome to Bowcast. We are here today with Jason, as always, and then Corey slash Machiavelli. Hello. Uh, pretty old school SoCal PM player. Been here yep. a while. Probably one of the oldest schools. Uh, yeah, I mean, you were technically mentioned a lot in the in the one we did with Jared and David as like one of the guys yeah. who kind of helped begin the scene. Yeah, the very first what you can consider a tournament in the SoCal scene was a sixteen man bracket at the second Melee Super Smash Sundays that I hosted, um, and you can actually go and find those results. It was, it was I think, won by. They're posted on my wall. No, it's on Smashboard. It's on a really old. Blur used to make, I don't know if he still does make, you know, uh, s- tournament results threads on Smashboards, but I think it was won by Dunskis. <laughs> second place was CT Tyrant. Third place was Yador. And I got like fourth or fifth. Yeah. So old school. Yeah. <laughs> For PM. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, to get us all warmed up and started, reaching to go around, since the theme of this uh, whole topic is national experiences, will we share, I guess, our favorite national experience? Our favorite right off the bat? Yeah. yeah. You want to go first? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll go first so that Courtney can go last. All right. right. Um, so I think that my favorite national experience was sort of um, – it was at Clutch City Clash, which is, like, in Texas. It was, like, mm-hmm. really, really hot and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, like, really nice because, like, me, Sosa, and IPK all flew down, and then we also Thunders was there. Uh, like, that was actually the first time I actually really met the guy. He's really, he's, he's a darling. Also, really, really, <laughs> really weird, <laughs> obviously. But, like, um, just, it was, like, the day before the tournament where, like, nothing much was really happening, and we were all, like, kind of bored at Fearless's house because he was housing us all. Yeah. Yeah. And it was sort of, like, we decided, oh, let's just go walk around the town or whatever. Fearless showed us. And then he took us to, like, a really, really good Texas rib place. And, my, and like, me and Sosa shared the tastiest rib I've ever had. And we still talk about it. <laughs> and I think that that's part of the reason why why Sosa really wants to go back to Clutch City is because, That was in like, Texas, right? He just that's wants in Texas. those ribs. He wants that rib. First off, he, he really likes Shahed. I do, too. Mm-hmm. Like, Fearless is a really cool guy who's, like, a really good host. Even though it was, like, 150 degrees outside. Oh. Inside, it was, like... Inside his apartment, it was, like, 60. Well, they're, they're prepared for that. Yeah, yeah. You live so there, you know. Fine. So, like, I don't know. Just, like, that whole being with them, walking around, watching, like, Thomas interact with, like, service staff and stuff oh, was boy. really funny. Yeah. <laughs> I bet there's a dozen stories just in that alone. I know. I guess <laughs> it's hard to pick a favorite because I've been to so many. I would say contenders for it are one uh, Paragon when we got just about all the PM developers the that we could in town. And uh, we all went to, I think it was Benny Hanna's and ate uh, the day before Paragon. And that was really fun. It was also fun talking to everyone at the tournament. Another favorite is just like uh recently at low tier city four there was an after party at the lunchables house and that was really fun just hanging out with everyone probably just moments like that that take place almost exclusively outside of the tournament (laughs) being the ones that are my favorites all right yeah uh my favorite national was otc3 that was like one of the that wasn't the first, because that was the first one I went, like, that wasn't, like, on the West Coast. Yeah. I've been to, like, a lot. We like, drove to that. But, yeah, we no, that so was far. that was an experience. Tristan was, like, <laughs> having a good time. And yeah. all that. <laughs> but uh, I would say, uh, I can't, like, think of any, like, specific moment. The only thing I do remember, more than a more of a funny thing than a favorite thing, was right. either, like, you or Terrell, or maybe Tristan, left their controller like on the roof me. of the car and then we drove somewhere we, we drove to like get food and then we like get out of the car and the controller is just it's it's still, still on top of the car yeah we got uh <laughs> from our hotel into the car to go get food before we left to a tournament and i might left my controller on top of the car and it survived the entire trip that like moving. makes no sense <laughs> yeah that it was, was my lucky so controller funny. and then at that tournament i ended up doing really well yeah. i like upset lunchables and ally and everything you got top eight <laughs> yeah. yeah it was cool that was really cool all right. It was my lucky <laughs> controller. It, it like it like yeah. magneted to it's the. It's like room. Buzz Lightyear hanging on to the back of the it had bumper a of the car. <laughs> yeah, it had a will of its own. <laughs> all right, and so yeah, before we actually get into talking about nationals and all that good stuff, we'll go over recent events and then some upcoming events for PM. So right. last weekend, obviously Genesis Four happened, which uh, most people will think of as Smash Four and Melee, but there was there was some PM. Oh yeah, it there's some there. good PM. Yeah, yeah, we uh, Alex and I hosted the uh, Cash Out sponsored by Blue Mask, and it was pretty cool. We had a lot of uh, 
not your normal PM people. I would say more like the top melee guys. We got to see Bread from like MDVA. We got to see Hungrybox, Professor Pro. None. Yeah, a lot none. of like cross smash exhibitions in yeah. bracket. And even though they were like, it was really cool because like obviously with that kind of event, you're like, oh god, are they like even gonna come? Like obviously they said <laughs> yes, but like who even knows? But actually, all of those guys were like, they came on time like as soon as melee ended, and they were all like, yeah, okay, let's play. I mean, <laughs> you could tell they were like exhausted, but like they were still like really chill about it, which was cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and there was actually like a lot of good uh, sets too. If anyone wants to, you want to go over like highlight sets of the. Well, I I, I tuned in for some of it. Oh yeah, you so like to yeah, I I, 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 was, I was like I was like really <laughs> tuckered out that day. So I like pretty much only saw most of the uh, the qualifying bracket because that happened before all of uh, Genesis Four Melee was over and stuff. Mm -hmm. So then like in the qualifier bracket, I did see like. Um, Pick or Pikmon kind of did. He made a huge losers run because like he he got he he got he lost to Brandendorf in in quarters in winners quarters. So if you actually look, scroll all the way down, Pikmon is like pretty much the furthest back he could be in losers. Beats oh, Dung Shiny, yeah. Sugi Dai, Ivane, <laughs> Mataz. Wow, just all NorCal people, and then, <laughs> and then beats Resolve too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. The, the qualifier was cool because we actually had um what was this time time. Muffin? Yeah, Time Muffin was, I want to say, a year. He's European, right? Yeah, yeah. And he, he came, and mm. we had, obviously, a lot of um, NorCal people came. We got to have Res lived. I Love Bagels was in it, and ended yeah. up uh, taking it. Oh, yeah, that grand final set was super crazy. Yeah, so. It, it was like, yeah, go, go, <laughs> Yeah, go. no, no, no. I Love Bagels got, like, fucked on, like, the, the first, like, you know how Grant's two sets? He got right. first, fucked the first one, and he didn't, like... You're like, oh my god, is Bagels gonna get, gonna get? Yeah. And like, we had just been talking like a day or two <laughs> earlier about how like, about just Game and Watch stuff, and he was just like, yeah, I just like really don't like losing the Game and Watch, <laughs> and I'm just watching this set, and I'm like, he's probably not liking losing this Game <laughs> yeah, Watch. Yeah, he's having having a good time, and then he ended up like bringing it back in. It was like a three zero. Yeah, yeah. Set. Somehow he just like turned it on. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you just need a refresh. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, you might have figured out everything you need to know. Within the first game or two of the first set, but now you're down 2 0, and now you're like, I'll just take the next oh, set. It's fine. <laughs> Classic mind game. I'm I'll just, get him next time. Yeah, giving him a free set and then. Just winning. to make him play extra shitty the next <laughs> one. And then, in terms it's of a like. a real mind game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess if you have like that set to throw and you're feeling that good, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then in terms of like actual invitational bracket, Frozen Sosa was probably like my favorite set to watch. Because mm -hmm. it was like. Frozen actually was playing, like, really on point. He, like, fought Blade-wise, and that was, like, game five, last stock, barely clutched it out. And that, like, looked like a not-fun matchup, like, mentality-wise. For both of them? Or yeah, because for... both those characters are, like, slow and, like, live yeah. forever, and it's like, uh... And then he goes on to fight Sosa in Winner's Quarter. That's Quarters. Yeah, and that, that set was also really close. It was, like, last game, last stock. And then he fought LZ, and it, it didn't go <laughs> as well. <laughs> it was funny, because I think... Game of Watch is the only character we have twice in here. Because we also had, like, a lot of character diversity in... Oh, that's true, huh? Yeah, because you have, like, Fal technically two Falcons, because Thunder is one Falcon, and then you have none one Falcon. But then we have two Game of Watches. I think they're, like, the only two. Because then you have uh, Puff, you've got Snake, Fox, Ness, Wario. Oh, two Warriors. Two Warriors. JK. What? What happened to Prof? Uh, oh, I saw him lose to Jose. Oh, that yeah, was that... not fun. That did not look fun. <laughs> yeah, he. I, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say, like, this is the kind of bracket, obviously, it was an invitational where, like, you do not get to warm up into the game. It's right. like, he basically came and immediately had to fight Jose V. <laughs> you he know? got three stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> it looks like the three most surprising things is one, Frozen's upset over Sosa, which isn't terribly surprising because, you know, top players will beat top players given yeah. enough time. And then Professor Pro and I Punch Kids going 0-2. That was, that's really surprising yeah, to look Yeah, I was at. actually really surprised of how David did. He lost to Nun um, in the first round and then lost to Strong Bad in the mm -hmm. second one. Yeah. And then I guess um, in terms of uh, in other interesting details, Thunders went only Falcon and did not struggle in the slightest. That guy is <laughs> so see. good. Yeah, he oh my drops. God. Yeah, it's really crazy that he's gotten so good in the region where there's not all that much competition to, to push him that far, you know? Also, Usually you're only as good as your competition. It's And it's also extra crazy because going into Olympus, people are all like, whoever wins Olympus is going to be the best player in the world. Ha <laughs> ha. Like, no yeah. one really, you know, like, Butters, I think, was seated like fourth or fifth at that tournament. 
yeah. and then he won and then ever since then people are like he's the best player in the world and now it's just like it's like there's like this aura it. there's this aura <laughs> about him where he is literally just beating everybody yeah the only turn it started at low tier city because you know winning low tier yeah. city alone isn't just you know spectacular just for doing it it was that he did it over lunchables and in such a brutal matchup <laughs> if he had you know if his bracket was this easy 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 matchup no one would probably consider him yeah. best in the world off of that tournament alone. But because he triumphed over DK Toon Link in such a fashion as he did, people were like, okay, he might be. And then Olympus came around and confirmed it. Yeah, basically, and now it's everybody. like, oh man, the, f- the fact that like he, like he so many people have had a shot at him too. <laughs> like, <Right>. loyal... Lo- <laughs> let's, let's talk... That's, that's the anomaly, but aside from that, like he's beaten Sosa multiple times, he's beaten LZ multiple times. Yeah, that's the weird thing. Yeah, and then he, he beat Lunchables again to... Like, I hear... I mean, I heard he was playing secondary. Yeah, he beat uh, LZ again too. So it wasn't like... Rewired yeah. was like some fluke. Like, look, he beat Lunchables, LZ, Sosa, all in a row. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, he beat yeah. So I love bagels. Jose B, Lunchables, LZ, and then Sosa. So it's a variety of play styles amongst all those too. He's really well rounded. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> but yeah, so that was cashed out. Those vods are up and linked in the little pin post or description. And then on to the next thing, we have the New York, New Jersey Arcadian. I would say at the very least, it's cool to see like every region is kind of getting on board the Arcadian train. Arcadians are so much fun. Yeah. I don't even get to participate in them. <laughs> They're my favorite. And I'll <laughs> always go to them if I can help it. Yeah. They're so much fun. Cool to yeah. socialize. And I feel like, at least in SoCal, it's the time where like everybody comes out of the woodwork. Like, yeah. Old and young mm-hmm. and like comes. It's, it's like really this cool. unspoken thing. Like every, <laughs> if you aren't ranked, you're going to the Arcadian. <laughs> Yeah, so 68 or 61 entrants yeah. at the New York, New Jersey one, which is really impressive considering how New York, New Jersey is like a nightmare to navigate through, you know? No. And it, yeah. I did not know. <laughs> no, it, well, it's, it's, it's insanely annoying. So, like, it's, it's crazy to get I that guess many it's people. it's just like the city life of like people have to like, don't really have their own cars and stuff. Yeah, or? it's like taking public transit just makes everything take so long, you know? Mm. Um, and then I think that the big story of this was that this guy named Daddy's Milk from Connecticut. <laughs> Came in and got second place at the Arcadian. Yeah, I've heard. Ooh. I've heard. My God. <laughs> oh, man. Just, I've never heard of that guy, but I heard that this <laughs> crazy upset happened, and now I've heard his name, and I still don't know who it is. I, I don't want to know. His profile has a Falco, so I'm just going to, like... He might be a Falco player. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of New York, New Jersey Which would actually be black. really... Yeah. would actually be even crazier, because, like, Falco these days is, like, not... The common Project M character. No. <laughs> he's Everyone very knows unpopular. he's like very good, but he's got like a couple really tough hurdles <laughs> that Fox doesn't have just because he's a little slower, a he's, little, he's a little easier to gimp. Yeah, he's a little less well rounded than Fox. Yeah. So occasionally you run into characters like Kirby who can give you a really hard time if you're not really familiar with the matchup. Mm. But yeah, to summarize the top three of that, I'll say we had Vary, Viari. Vari. Vari. Uh, first, he's got a Mario icon. I'm going to say he plays Mario. <laughs> then you got Daddy's Milk second. And then third was Dan Dizzle. Dan Dizzle plays Rob. Okay. One person who I am surprised now that I'm looking at it not to see in top uh, eight, uh-huh. who maybe didn't even go to the tournament, was Ant. He's this Lucas player that I remember I fought at Supernova, and he was really surprisingly good. Or I might have fought Ant's, him in the weekly Ant before. Ant is actually PR now. Good, because like when I fought him at the time, he was like fourth seed in my pool. And um, I remember fighting him and thinking that his punish game was really good. And <laughs> I was surprised that he wasn't ranked or not even seeded very well. Oh, yeah, yeah, 16. Yeah. Yeah, so Luke now he's out there. I'm glad. That's good. It's also, it's also, and like going like going to the next tournament, there are also other players that have been stepping up in New York, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. That's just one in particular I remembered. Yeah, I, I was in Taco Cat's pool at... Um, Supernova, and he was he was pretty good. So like he got top eight at this this uh, Arcadian too. So that's nice. Yeah, and then the final event that we'll talk about from the past week, actually the last weekend, was the True King, another event on the East Coast. Forty six people, and then yeah, it was basically just like a big s- ass regional. Yeah, big ass regional of like New York, New Jersey, and like other East Coast people around. And then I think I think everyone can agree like the notable the most notable thing was Aiden beating Malachi in winners. And then switch cleaning it up against Malachi and losers. Yeah. Which is really crazy. Because, like, I mean, you probably know more than anyone, like, perhaps, like, I feel like Aiden is kind of slowly getting Aiden up there. Aiden is so good. <laughs> Aiden, okay, like, Aiden's, I don't know, like, he's he's taking Zero Suit. Like, he, he is way more controlled and collected than 
either me or blank mm-hmm. and i would say that like with this win over malachi especially because i played malachi at uh at uh olympus, olympus and he fucked me up <laughs> he, like four stalked me game one and three stalked me game two so i'm like how did he even do that how did he two stalk he, oh, he two owed him yeah i looked at the mod specifically for that match i'm like aiden how'd you do this dude and he just like he plays like so like collected his dash dance is so tight mm. and like he doesn't make any mistakes which is or, or at least in that set he didn't you know it was like a very like like well disciplined set and I, I really recommend anyone who wants to see that matchup watch it it's like super good yeah, and then he goes on to also beat Stereo Kid. I don't know, like, his setup, like, his, like, ratio to wins to losses on Stereo Kid. But that's also, like, a pretty solid win. Yeah. And then he ends up getting knocked down into losers by Gallo. And then, yeah, Switch's set against Maokai was also really, really crazy. Ooh, I saw the ending. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that was game five. Uh, and then I remember Switch, like, took uh, Maokai's stock. And then Maokai, like, respawns. Some mumbo-jumbo neutral happens. And then... Uh, Maokai gets tossed over to the side, gets dared by Switch, and then Switch footstools him at, like, I don't know, like, 20 or something percent. Jeez. And, and Maokai just lost. It was, <laughs> uh, Adrian and I popped off so hard in the house. We're just like, yo! <laughs> it was hype. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, yeah, I figured we could, uh, I don't know if there's other sets we wanted to talk about. I do want to talk about, uh, Young Quaff taking oh, yeah. it over DVD in Winners. I think that that's pretty cool. Young Quaff, is he PR'd right now? He might be PR'd uh, in 20. No, no, he is... Doesn't look like he's... Well, PR'd. he's not PR'd anymore. He mm-hmm. used to be PR'd in 20. Was he, like, at the bottom? Yeah, so, like, I guess, mm-hmm. like, and then, you know, DVD is a top five N- NYNJ guy. Yeah. So, like, that win is super huge, it looks like, which made... Oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, two oh two. What is these two O's? Oh my god. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> and then he goes on to lose to Gallo, as you do, who yeah. won the whole tournament. And then he goes on nice. to Oh yeah, he beat Doc on too, and then goes on to lose to Malachi. Malachi because Malachi got upset by eight. Oh my god, look at this. So he like gets he like two O's D V D and then two O's and he's like oh. like hungry or three O's N V and then he comes to Switch and it's like Switch is like, not today. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, to review the top eight, I thought the top eight like like is all notable names. Like, very very strong. Which players. is like, like regionals can be like sometimes it's like top three, top five. But I feel like I looked at this and I'm like, all of these people more or less are like known people. New York, New Jersey is super good. Yeah. So like, have... if they if you can ever get a tournament like the mm. rare tournament where they all show up to something, yeah. it's insane. I would definitely watch the VOTS one. I plan to rewatch a lot of it because yeah. like it looked like like almost every set was like, what is happening? Yeah. The full VODs are up, but they're like four hour long videos, and if you want to look for the mm-hmm. sets. Yeah, yeah, you gotta sift. <laughs> but yeah, or just so, watch them all, whatever. Yeah, I guess I'll just quickly go through top eight. You had first with Gallo. He pretty much undisputed. I don't even think Switch got that close in. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, ooh, but it was game three. I don't, I don't remember watching that and thinking it was like super close. But yeah, so you had Gallo take first, Switch second, eight and third, fourth Stereo Kid, fifth Young Quaff, tied with Malachi with fifth, and then seventh. Uh, was a tie between GP and NV. So there you go. That was the true game. Boop. Yeah. Babe. And then in terms of upcoming events, this Saturday we begin the Midwest Circuit. It's the first event of their circuit that Love they like circuits. to start. Yeah, a lot of circuits happening now, which, is, which is fun. Um, uh, yes, that's this Saturday. It already has 54 people signed up. If you're in Arkansas and you're not going... Uh, uh, baby hello. go. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, um. hey. Uh, hello, Arkansas, come on. <laughs> yeah, and then it's already got Bobby Frizz. A bait is signed up, which I thought was oh, cool. Oh, that's really cool. Signed up for PM. Yeah, I right. talked with him a bit at uh, Genesis, but I didn't actually talk to him about PM that much. But yeah, that was cool. Because I got to watch him fight I Love Bagels like they did a couple money matches in Midland. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So that was fun. And then Luck and Dakpo are also signed up. So it looks like you've got a mix of, like, Midwest and then Texas the South and, and stuff. stuff. Yeah. And then Tales of Jank 10, which is the next Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday. That is the second Midwest Circuit event, and that's in Wisconsin. Um, you're basically signing up at the door, I saw, so I don't really have, like, an estimate of, like, yeah. how many people are It's also are going. Smashers. You'll never know. Yeah, yeah. But it, there was already, like, 100-plus people saying going on the Facebook page and then, like, another 100 or two, like, interested. Mm-hmm. So it's probably going to be, like, yeah, gonna be... pretty sizable. And then you already have Marshall, <laughs> Ripple, and... Oh, really? I want to say is how you say yeah, it. Yeah, it's either Orly or Orly. <laughs> um, and then Soth was interested. I didn't see if he had actually confirmed or anything. So that'll be like another good... There's like two Midwest things coming up, and I feel like a lot of people overlook the Midwest, even though they actually have like a lot of good people, so... 
Yeah, it's hard to get them all together because usually, like, whenever the Midwest goes, it's only like some of them are there. But they're like they have a huge pool, you know. Well, I mean? yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the Midwest is also like, like a huge area, eight yeah. different states. Exactly. <laughs> Regions like New York and SoCal don't mix very often because obviously they're on different sides of the continent. But <laughs> you think the Midwest, maybe they're close to everything because they're in the middle. No, it just means they're far from everything. <laughs> yeah. It still takes it like a plane ticket. Actually, yeah. The time. Be- before I guess we start talking about nationals, um, we've been looking at like all the circuit events and like right. trying to figure that garbage out not that i will spoil anything about that oh but the it's like PM circuits? yeah like the the actual one but um <laughs> oh the, 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 the real one, not, these other ones. <laughs> not these tiny ones no dude shout out to the tiny tiny circuits um <laughs> but yeah no if you like look at a map of like all the like regional and national events coming up for like the next year there's like the west coast and then there's like this weird bar of like nothing like colorado all these like little <laughs> states i have nothing and then it's like Midwest. There's like this weird, like everywhere else, more or less has like one or two dots, yeah. like roughly in that area. And then there's just this like little like Sliver, wall of nothing. Sliver. It's uh, really fun. We're, lo- we're looking at uh, <laughs> we got our eyes on near West Coast to get together and start hosting yeah. some come circuits. On, come on, Wyoming fan. <laughs> yeah, is that where Wyoming is? I don't even. Know. <laughs> I hope it's that's where it is. Okay. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's upcoming events. And then I guess we'll get started on our actual topic of the evening. All right. Nationals. Nationals. Yes. Specifically, our first question is, what was your first national? I guess I'll start yeah, you'll this time. Um, <laughs> I don't actually remember with certainty what my first national was. It's or just at least the so first, many. The first <laughs> major that I had to travel to, it was definitely in Arizona. And I want to say the name was Desert Storm or something to that effect. Um, I remember a lot of early faces of PM today in their, like, pre-evolved form like, um, <laughs> little baby there, there was little baby uh, Z-Man there who, oh. who at the oh. time had tried to uh, run his stream uh, recording off of an HD TV instead of a CRT until it <laughs> stopped working and it got switched out and then um, oh. this was back when how, how long are we talking how long ago are we talking right now because <laughs> that's like kind of intense <laughs> that like Ye- he would ago. be using an HD TV Z-Man on HD TV <laughs> many years ago this was probably just what after... What version of the game? <laughs> probably, like, just after 3.0 came out. Like, immediately after release. Oh. Um, and uh, there was old old school players like K9 were at this tournament. Mm-hmm. This was also the first time me and many of the Soka players had traveled. And the first time we'd heard of Jaime, oh. we all oh, were sitting down. There was this yeah. sort of exciting moment where you get to a national and you don't know anyone else around you and you start sitting down for friendlies and you really don't know what to expect. <laughs> Um, but we're pretty good in our region, so we expect to be pretty good against people from other regions, at least most people, the same kind of proportions, right? And then we sit down with this guy that's really quiet, doesn't talk a whole lot, not even sure how much you know English he spoke at the time, um, and he just starts beating all of us. And we're like, who is this guy? And he plays only Bowser? No, he played like Bowser, Falcon, Wario. He played tons of people, and he was <laughs> just destroying all of us. He was destroying me, Arrow. And then it turns out it's Jaime, <laughs> we come to know him as, and he won that tournament, I think. Really? I think he oh like, won it over Axe for first place, 3-0, over his Pikachu, oh God. which was with Bowser. And this was <laughs> such a sight to see at the time. And <laughs> for Bowser. the next couple regionals at Arizona, that, that narrative continued where Jaime would just win them all. And he'd do it with Bowser, and he'd beat people you didn't think should have a chance against Bowser, you know? Or my god <laughs> the reverse you didn't think you know axe's pikachu Could would lose. ever stop <laughs> like against a bowser he would just force stalk him constantly yeah but no jaime was a monster <laughs> he's apparently like a smash 64 prodigy but i don't yeah. really follow that wasn't very jaime much. at was jaime at genesis yeah prior? he was playing i talked to him always playing 64 at genesis Did i didn't know well? he was there until after it cashed out so yeah. i would have invited him otherwise because that dude is like like he has come to like he had come to what did we call it legacy a couple times yeah. and he beat venom and other people mm-hmm. at that time so that was pretty crazy i also remember still going at it desert storm uh chaos was still playing jigglypuff which was his original character before he picked up mewtwo <laughs> remember this <laughs> was his like first tournament or something or one of them and he was playing jigglypuff with that's really people. weird yeah huh it's Dang. pretty old that's a, yeah. Right. My my first tournament experience was a little less old. 
uh, like, mine will be like the least that, old. That's true. <laughs> so we'll don't go, even worry. We'll go in. We'll go in chronological order because like um, I joined sort of halfway through 3.0, and mm-hmm. I didn't actually travel because I didn't like. There were a lot of times where people went to like NorCal or went to like AZ, but like I just didn't really feel like traveling because I didn't really you know right. whatever like want to or like like had like enough friends in the community to like be, want a carpool or something. So like my first national was Aftershock, which is when, the, I, I think that's when a lot of the SoCal players flew for the first time. Cause we all like kind of got on a plane. It was really fun. Like or you went, you went, but you drove. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> like Mock always likes driving for where you've driven to Oklahoma multiple times, which is something that it's, I, I do not understand. It's, uh, I've only done it once and I learned my lesson. We could maybe get into that story <laughs> okay, later. That we'll story get... is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So I think it's I... worth immortalizing on this podcast. Yeah, so I flew, and it was like me, Sosa, IPK, Arrow, West Balls, like... West Balls. Man. West Balls, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, back then, like, Lobo, Two Jar. We're all on the exact same... Fl- Stoffy was there. Oh! Yeah, yeah, we're all on the same flight, on the same airplane, and we're, like, all looking around at each other, and I'm looking at IPK, and he's gripping his, his, uh, his oh, armor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the first time he'd been on a plane. Yeah, I was like, David, are you scared? Why do I like, still like, know that? <laughs> I'm like, David, what's happening? David's like, I've never been on a plane before. Yeah. I'm really scared. What if we crash? And I'm like, uh, David, we're not gonna crash. It's okay. So, like... <laughs> I don't know. I, I, like actually, like getting to the tournament, I thought it was really cool because, like, like being at a at a regional or like a national as opposed to a local, like you really feel like the camaraderie with your own region. I think that that's something I really really like. Mm. Like being able to go around and like say like, oh, how are you doing in sets? And like you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to beat this guy. And mm. You like, like I feel like at a local, you don't actually sit down with one of your friends and help like practice with them, right? Mm-hmm. Or it's like, oh yeah, you need you need like what like. Fox practice on fastballers, chain grabs or something. Let, let me just do that with you and we'll yeah. lab it out or something. Like, I thought that was something really cool that I did at Aftershock with, like, some of the different people. You know, like, I just, and, like, obviously, like, meeting the, the other the other region was really cool. Like, getting to play friendlies with, like, Seth Long Strong, Bad Lunchables. And, like, really, like, oh, shit, I didn't know you could do that with this character or whatever. And especially because that was the point when, like, SoCal <laughs> was super duper arrogant. We thought we were the best. <laughs> And, like, we go over and we go to Aftershock and, like, none of us even play Top 8 except for IPK. Oh, yeah. Oh, we all get super destroyed. <laughs> I lost to some Falco player named Albert. I'm like, well, who the fuck? I, I fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Jesus Christ. Albert, like, got ninth place at the tournament over all of our guys. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. Whatever. Like, it was super humbling. And I thought that, I don't know, like, it was it was really different from, like, a local. Mm-hmm. And I, that's how come I kept going some more. Yeah, so I didn't technically even like start doing competitive smash until like right before 3.02 is when like we kind of dabbled and then 3.02 i remember we came back from winter break and we were like it's time to get serious so we started doing that and then i would say we didn't go to our first trip until like six months later i think my first it wasn't technically a national but my first time i like traveled for smash was um i always get confused because they kind of named them weird but i want to say it was final boss not final boss 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 two. two Yeah. yeah, with like Lucky and all those other people, and with LTC remember. before that. I know that Chaos went to. Pretty sure Boss Two was first. Okay, cool. Then yeah, Boss Two in NorCal was my first one. The first time like we drove, or I drove like anywhere like past three hours to go to a tournament. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that the was San Diego limit. That mm-hmm. was funny because like. I don't know. Like, at, at the time, like, I was, like, not even remotely known. I was just some chick at a tournament, you know? And I was <laughs> yeah. like, oh, yeah, she's shitty. And it was like, oh, yeah, a little bit, but whatever. My warrior's Jake. And I remember <laughs> I made it out of pools there. I beat um that one Lucas guy that is in our pool. Scrackett? No. In our pool. In our – he's from SoCal. I, oh, I, can't, I, feel, I can't believe I forget his name. He plays Lucas, but he doesn't, Man like – Brace? Come, no, he doesn't come to stuff that often. G- Gino? Yeah. GMI. GMI. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, GMI went to this tournament? Damn. Yeah. That's cool. I like that guy. I remember yeah. at some point speaking up to the, the TO about you and like how to place you because he came up and asked me. And, it, you know, the assumption is if there's a girl at a tournament, they're like really <laughs> yeah. not so good at the game. But the, you were actually like pretty good. Yeah. The only person and people I had lost to take you to, seriously. The only person I lost to was, oh, what was that melee guy? I want to say it was like 
S Fat, I want to say, or mm-hmm. Silent Wolf. I don't know. It was some fox, Probably some melee fox. Yeah, S-Fat, was that the tournament? Yeah, yeah. I think it was S Fat. Was like, and then I like, cause like I had beaten everyone else. So I was like, dude, what if I like took a game off S Fat? And then he just <laughs> dumpstered me. Like, he just <laughs> okay. shined me everywhere. I was like, oh my god, I can't even do this. <laughs> yeah, good times. But yeah, no, that was cool. I actually had the fortune, like in terms of like my national, not not to brag, <laughs> but my <laughs> low, low key brag is that like, and I guess this is why like I had such a good time with the nationals and like I wanted to travel so much back when I actually played was like, whenever like we traveled anywhere, I don't know, like I, I always like made it out of pools, which is like really fun when you're like a newer player. It's mm-hmm. like. That's like, like, you're like on the bubble, you never yeah, know. Yeah, that's all you care about is like, well, whatever, like, I'll get fucked up in real bracket, but if I can fuck up all the other shitters, yeah. So yeah, I remember <laughs> that. Pools is a like, pretty big victory for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, even going like one and two in a bracket in a local is a big deal, but getting out of pools at a yeah. regional yeah, It feels huge. good, because yeah. like, I don't know, it's just like, usually, especially in SoCal where the bracket's like, oh, you beat... Random guy here, fight IPK. It's like, oh well, there was my run. <laughs> yeah. So pools, yeah, I had a really good time. It was in. I would definitely say we'll get into this more, but like getting to like taste another like new yeah. environment of like their community and Smash and like really like rooting with your team, like your like regional homies is like changes everything. Yeah. I think like most people will attest to like. Traveling for Smash, like, changes... You come back and you're, like, on a totally different level of, like, how much you love the community. <laughs> but anyway, I guess we'll start off with some differences between a local and a national, since we've been kind of talking about that. Um, I guess you guys will probably have more to say on this, but I guess skill level we'll start with. I guess we can just keep going with our little circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, depending on the region and just the general activity, you see local to local there. Um Regionals and majors in general are gonna bring out more of the PR. It usually brings out almost all of it. They save sh- like they better. <laughs> they gotta you gotta defend. Sorry. Yeah, and then it'll bring out the most eager of the PR of the neighboring uh, states. Sometimes, if the tournament's even big enough, people will fly from way so out of no. state, <laughs> across the country, from another country completely. Um, you're getting like the best at many characters that are usually unrepresented in your state. Or maybe you are represented but in a different style. Uh, you're obviously going to get a lot of the uh, aspiring players that aren't, you know, really well established. Mm. Uh, regional threats come out. Uh, local players like SoCal is has always been known to be a, a pretty big region with a pretty big player base. Um, and when Paragon came around, mm. we set the record for biggest Project M tournament just because. Perfect. We had it took enough. place. It took place in SoCal. <laughs> yeah, it, finally, one of these majors took place in SoCal, which had like the biggest scene, and like so many faces that I hadn't seen since maybe 3.0 showed up, out of the blue, and uh, it really just brings out everyone. It's really great to see just the numbers, and also, um, obviously, the talent from out of state that you don't get to see very often, all in one place. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think also it's like just you. Because, especially if you're going to a national from out of region, there are so many people there that you don't know, mm-hmm. you know? And, like, you'll you'll play against somebody, and, like, like it's like, okay, I'm, like, I flew to, like, New York, New Jersey. Like, I know, like, Switch and, like, Fresh right. and all of them. But then you play, like, random pretty good guy, and, like, mm-hmm. oh, my God. <laughs> you can't tell random pretty good guy any different from, like, just random shitty guy. So you jump into your pool, and, like, you play a match, and it's like, oh, yeah, that was just a random shitty guy. <laughs> but then you play against random pretty good guy, and he takes, like, a game off, and you're like, holy shit, who is this, like, Kirby? <laughs> you know, like, who is this New York Kirby that I've literally never heard about? What was your tag again? And, like, I forgot his tag, but, like, he definitely took a game off of me. At Supernova. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it's just, like, you have to be on your toes so much earlier. It's it, That's get, my favorite part yeah. of Nationals is that you don't know who anyone is. And it's, like, I don't know, going to locals, you know what to expect from every other player. You've seen the names. You've, yeah. you've you also these know people, their play them. styles, too. Right. But then you go to a regional, and it's almost like your memory was wiped. <laughs> and you have no idea what to expect. You have to, like, treat everyone like they're a yeah. serious threat. And that's exciting. When I have pools... At majors, I almost always get out, but 
I'm always really worried. <laughs> I'm always worried about like second and third seed or fourth and even, also, and I'm just panicking the whole time yeah. until I finally end up succeeding or not. And like this is like more of like an us specific thing, but it's sort of like when you go to like a tournament and like you know you're seated first in your pool, mm-hmm. it's like everybody else in that pool is looking through every one of your videos. Yeah. And they're, like, studying you, studying that matchup. They're getting, like, hey, random guy. It's me, random shitty guy. And, like, I really need Ivysaur practice. Can you come over? Mox in my pool for this regional. And, like, you know that everyone's going to try their hardest against you. I've seen, Which, which like, makes it really, really stressful. And I remember specific moments of going to, to regionals or nationals and uh, recognizing someone as being from my pool and I look over and they're playing with an Ivy Sword player at a setup. Like, oh yeah, I guess this <laughs> oh, is yeah. happening. Dude, that, you, ain't, you ain't gonna last <laughs> shit against me. You can try all you want. But yeah, I don't know. Skill level, it's like, poof, hits you like a wave. You know yeah, what I mean? and it's like really unfiltered skill level. You Because you don't know their play styles, you don't know what to expect. Because there's, you know, the sort of baseline skill level of a player that you know really well, like your practice partner. They might be really good, but you know them very well. And if you had to fight them for the first time, it would be way harder. That's why, you know, going out of region, even, like, sort of mid-level players instantly gain a couple levels of yeah. difficulty. It's, oh, my God. It's at really C- fun. At CCC, I, like, went last off last hit against this nest that I, I didn't even know who he was. I almost went 0-2 in bracket to this nest. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this, like, just randomly. Yeah. When you get to that little, like, slightly, like, that hidden boss region, they're, they are super hidden. There's hidden bosses everywhere. Oh, my God. People that, you know, we've seen upset major people from socal you know sometimes you'll go to a tournament you'll just you'll get bodied in friendlies by some guy that you're sure is like so obscure he has to look himself up on youtube <laughs> and then like i don't know it's just so exciting just yeah. the 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 mystery i guess i'll speak on like the opposite side of the spectrum i know back especially when i was a player like going to like nationals and regionals was really exciting because like not every region has like every character mm-hmm. and like I mean, I guess I played Wario, so Sosa was around. But, like, I don't know. Like, it, I guess it was at a time where Sosa, like, wasn't allowed to be at my house. So, like, I guess I just <laughs> he never... was banned. <laughs> he was just never around, so I never, like, actually practiced with him. But, like, I know I liked going to, like, LTC and playing with Strong Bad, and I got to, like, talk with him about the character and, like... Oh, yeah. Getting That's pretty to, cool, like, too. Yeah, getting to, like... Because PM just has so many characters that there's, like... Like, almost... Like, some regions don't even have your character. Like, anybody else playing your character, let alone, like someone good at the characters yeah. so like it's kind of cool to like to be able to like go to different regions and like yeah. meet other people playing the same character as you that's actually one of the points that i wanted to talk about most about nationals and why they stand out they're not just big tournaments and they're not just hard tournaments in a game like smash with its engine where you can play you know even if there's like eight characters you can play them in so many different styles it, you might have in such a small game every character represented in your region but not every style guaranteed um not every kind of player and so when you go out of region you're going to get that experience that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten just staying in one place but in a game like pm where there's not just eight characters there's there's like like 40 of them yeah Yeah. then (laughs) you're not even going to get every character in your region our region doesn't have a lot of characters represented and we're one of the biggest regions in yeah. PM, we don't have a very good Marth right now. We don't have many Sheiks. That was your big. That was your biggest fear going into uh, was, aftershock. I remember you were like, "Dude, random Marth is gonna body me." We literally yeah. don't have any Marths. <laughs> yeah, and Marth is considered a pretty hard matchup for Ivy Source. So and a very worse. common character, especially yeah. in Texas, where it was like a lot of Marths and Roy's. Right. And so you, if you really want to get good at PM, you have to travel because you're just not gonna find it in your local region in net play. You're probably not even going to get a good connection with the the regions furthest from you. You 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 just have to travel. There's no other way around it to get that kind of experience. It's very hard with so many characters in that game. But when you have like that star-crossed lovers moment, when you, I'm like, I see numerics across the room, and and like he's like my zero suit bud. I'm like, oh my god, let's sit down and play some games. Then Aiden comes over from the side, and we have like a three-man zero suit rotation. You just like the knowledge flows. You're like, oh my god, I didn't know you could do that or whatever. And like, it's it's like really, I think it's really cool. It's almost like a little like smash like geneva convention where you're like for each like you know i'm sure you've done it with like soth and like uh, jay-z i guess when he was around where like you kind of like talk about different things that your character yeah can do and you like learn when you like travel their regions yeah it's always interesting fighting your own character or specialists in your own character because there's so many 
you'll go you'll you'll go weekly to weekly thinking you know like i've got like maybe 99 percent of this character like, <laughs> i understand out, like, how it works yeah and then you fight someone from out of region who specializes in your character and you just like wow now there's like a dozen things from this one set we played in friendlies that i need to consider and work on <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess if we're going into community differences, like, I definitely feel that. Like, being able to, like, even just as a spectator, like, not even playing characters, but just, like, watching stuff, like, at a national, like, mm -hmm. the hype alone, obviously, is, like, something that you only can really experience, like, being there. But, like, also being able to, like, talk to people from, like, well, at my time, it was, like, Skype, Skype groups. Like, I got to meet a lot of the Warriors on, like, Skype groups, and then, like, being able to, like get tips from him. I guess, again, like, I'm coming from, like, the opposite side of the spectrum. Like, I'm coming from, like, oh, I play this character, but, like, again, like, I'm an idiot and I don't talk to Sosa because he should talk to me once. So, like, I'm not asking him <laughs> for help. So, like, uh, yeah, so being able to, like, meet other people who, like, not even, like, are the best at the character, but, like, getting, like, be like, yo, can I, like, get some advice? Like, tell me what yeah. I'm doing wrong. <laughs> P yeah. Getting good at PM is, is, is getting good at adaptation. Ooh. I've always sort of said that if you wanted to like test a melee player, um, you throw them in a PM bracket, and you want to test their adaptation, you see how well they do in melee in, in PM. <laughs> we all know that there's a lot of melee players who you throw them in a PM bracket, and they drown, you know, or sometimes they succeed, they like flourish in PM because they're just so creative and they just thrive in this kind of environment. It's a really interesting test. <clears throat> I'd be interested in seeing more top melee players take that test. Yeah, then they they've been like. I don't know. I feel like West West Falls and Lucky like are still like kind of very sporadic in their placements or whatever. <laughs> but like they keep they keep at it, which I think is like super cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially but yeah, with such volatile characters. Keeping on with the community differences, I guess we'll go into like I imagine this is more like your local group coming with you to nationals kind of thing, or do you mean like? Yeah. So okay. So like, <laughs> like I think that like what's cool about a national and a local is sort of like the feel of the community around it, right? So it's all like when you're at a local you. And especially, like, because it's the balcony, I feel like it's, like, super duper local, where it's, like, you feel like you go and you know everybody there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. when you go over and, like, you know, like, everyone's jokes, you know, like, who you, like, pretty much hang out with or whatever, or it's, like, oh, yeah, these, like, we're gonna meet up with these people afterwards or something. When you go to, like, a national, it's sort of, like, you, you, you walk into the doors and you're, like, I'm gonna make, like, a bunch of friends today, <laughs> right? Or, like, I'm, like, I'm not gonna talk to anybody or something. <laughs> but, but it's, like, it definitely feels a lot different, you know? Like, there are so many new people, and especially, like, the different, like, regions have different cultures, like... Going to Final Boss was cool, but also there were, like, a shit ton of memes. Because that's NorCal. You know what I mean? Or, like, going to, like, Houston Texas. was... Yeah. Dallas. <laughs> Dallas, Dallas. Texas. Yeah. The, da the Dallas is a meme factory. <laughs> <laughs> a fact I, I really like the Houston guys, too. Yeah. Uh, they're, like, super cool. And then, like, you go over to, like, New York, and everyone's, like, super, like like really like fighty and stuff and yeah I think that, new york yeah. is like really incautious with money you'll be like at a at a local or something and people are like 50 dollar money match now and you, to get something like that from socal there has to be some really bad blood but in 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 new york this is just every single day you just like money match yeah, your friends your family your your animals you money match everyone that's for what like sosa hundreds said of dollars. his favorite that's what sosa's favorite thing about new york was is like Jason, I love I love New York because this the, the common practice there is five dollar best of three. But in SoCal, if you can, you you can't get anyone to do anything less than like a one dollar. You know, like he's yeah. like he, he's trying to grab money from people, but in New York they were just giving it to him. He's like, I love that. <laughs> it's really neat to see the uh, the community differences between the different things. I've always liked to. Uh, finding out the like little idiosyncrasies about each community and the the sort of general mindsets because you know you spend. Uh, enough time within one group of people they Kinda sort of echoes. they sort of yeah they sort of become distinct and i don't know how to word it like uh their opinions kind of melt together exactly they start to sort of homogenize texas for example um really is way into memes i don't like it uh, i can't stress that enough but <laughs> yeah i really can't stress it enough they love memes and uh they also like i don't want to you know start throwing shade at random regions but they also complain a lot <laughs> they do you'll i'll like go back and watch a vod that i played uh while on stream in texas mm -hmm. and they'll be talking about like man snake's down throw is stupid and it's like i'm like not even playing a snake at, at the time or something <laughs> like that 
And I feel like in SoCal, you get made fun of if you do that. In SoCal, everyone just thinks they're, like, the best. Yes. If I want to throw shade at my own region. <laughs> everyone's, like, really overestimates themselves. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, we're oh, really yeah. good at no, that. No, that's yeah. the best part of SoCal. Is we always go to Nashville. It's like, oh, we're going to win. And then we leave. And we're like, well, we got high PK in top eight. That's kind of like, we cool. got bodied, but we're just going to forget about it. <laughs> we're Whether so I like best. to admit it or not, also New York is the same way. <laughs> New York and SoCal have very similar personalities other than, you know, the behavioral difference where New York is really incautious with their money and SoCal <laughs> hates money matches, apparently. Mm. Um, New York also thinks that they're the best and they're also very sure of themselves. That's why we get along so well. Or don't yeah. get along at all, depending on how you Yeah, they're so it. heated towards each other. It's like you go to a, you see a NorCal bracket and you, you take every single SoCal player and you put it in a New York bracket. Like at a uh, recent regional there or major that I can't remember the name of. What was it? The circuit finale, Olympus, Olympus, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like Sosa was top three seeds or something like that, and then the Percy. next, the, the next best <laughs> SoCal player was like twenty third or something, and New York had like shoved in their entire PR between Sosa and our next best player. <laughs> so New York is really confident in their in like their entire player base before Jose, you know, poor Jose, <laughs> or like Venom will just get like seated fortieth or something. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm sure that they'd see the same thing happening in SoCal from their perspective, you know? Pretty much. It's I'd... hard because the regions never mix. I feel like New York doesn't travel a whole lot. They're pretty isolated. Yeah, they're isolated. changing that, which is pretty nice, especially nice with all this see. like crowdfunding that's going around. But that's getting a little a little off track. But yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think that what's what I want to talk about. And I think this is a good pivot point to talk about right. like like community differences between like locals and like nationals is like a lot of the play style stuff Mm -hmm. and i think that that does stem from sort of mentality changes you know mentality changes in the the characters too. yeah i remember when we went like 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 we have ipk so Mm -hmm. then lucario was just like really fucking busted to (laughs) all of us in socal but nobody else believed us yeah i remember everyone else would be like no lucario is like really bad like bottom five bad and we're all like no no (laughs) you guys don't understand (laughs) until you've experienced this real stream too so people would just hear about like the crazy combos, but they'd be like, "Oh, you're just not dying right." He has no neutral. I know that was a joke R- for a ra- long time. Random weekly in Shipville, nowhere states <laughs> freaking out about Ike. You know, like, <laughs> why should I care? Pretty much, and like, it's like I don't know. I feel like a lot of the top player habits sort of trickle down. So like, I noticed a lot when I was like in Texas, like, uh, there are a lot of Roy's because Lunchable plays. Yeah, there Roy. are a Except lot of Roy's. Yeah, Cephalon and Lunchables both play Roy. And then, like, there were a lot of uh, Lucarios back back in the day because David played Lucario a lot. I remember you had made a uh, character popularity tier list. Oh, my God, I Lucario forgot about that. Lucario was the most popular character, according to your survey, yeah, and he was I, awarded Pop Idol tier or Pop something? Pop Idol like? tier, double S. Oh, my God. I it remember. was like I had, like, 100-something responses, and literally, like, 12 of them were, I main Lucario and played <laughs> nobody else. I'm like, Jesus Christ. update that. I'd be kind of curious, because, like, thinking off the top of my head, like, nowadays, like, I don't feel like there's, like, a trendy character right now yeah. as much as there used to be, you know? Yeah. But it's, fox. like, I think... <laughs> yeah, I guess. Everyone has a secondary fox now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Like, back to, the, back to like, play styles and stuff. Definitely, like, I don't know if you felt it when you moved to New York. Or, like, not moved, but, like, we traveled to New York. Like, SoCal is a lot more loose with, like, how we play the game. And, like, everyone kind of... It's not that we go in a lot, but it's, like, we're, like, really sloppy and we aren't really, like... We really... want to do what we want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just do what we want to do, whether that's camp a shit ton or, like, go in. Mm-hmm. Like, we do it. But I feel like in in New York, when I went there, what I noticed is, like, even in their mid-level players, they were, like, very, like, fundamentally, like, sound. And they, like... Very patient. Yeah, they didn't have, like, super crazy punish games because, like, we, like, push it really hard. And, like, when I felt it against them, like, whatever. But their neutral was super safe. And I feel like that was, like, across the whole region I noticed that mm-hmm. thing, you know? Yeah, like, it probably started with just a couple top players playing the sort of style of uh, I'll move second. They wait for you to move first, and then they punish you at it, and they get really good at that. And everyone's like, well, then I'll do it, I guess. <laughs> you know, all of my top players that I look up to are doing it. And then suddenly the whole region has this sort of general defensive play style, at least compared to SoCal. You know, they were not They were never outright campy. No. Um, they were, they I were never, like, like, runaway campy, just, like, super boring. It was just, like, they were patient. They knew in what's about the game. Yeah, in any situation where SoCal would have, like, absolutely thrown in a random, like an all-in yeah. fair. Um, they would just wait for you to make the move first. 
Yeah, I, I, I did notice, like, because, like, there were a lot of times where, like, their punishes would end because they would want to keep center, or, mm-hmm. for example, or something like that. And I'm like, no one would ever do that. Like, people throw away stage control all the time in SoCo. Yeah. You know? Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I thought that that's also, that's something that you really pick up and you take home with you. Yeah. It's just, like, even character to character, ignoring just regional, general play styles, mm-hmm. um, every character can be played a number of ways, you know? I play a sort of... Uh, Can't be. Temple of Doom, Ivy Sword is how you put it. Um, it. It's like a ninja warrior obstacle course trying to like really get in and stay in. And then outside of SoCal, we have Soth who plays Ivy Sword as if it's the Tasmanian Devil and just kind of freaks out constantly. And it's like <laughs> it's kind two of very, yeah, very two distinct styles, and uh, each has pretty good success. So, um, you know, if you were really good at fighting his style doesn't necessarily mean you're good at fighting mine it's almost there's in a sense more than 41 characters in the game there's hundreds if you play each character to a different style to its maximum yeah so okay let's 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 talk more about because we talked about nationals as in like oh they're different from us you know like what does it feel like to go to like a new region and stuff Mm -hmm. but i think that and we're going to be talking to you a lot about this Corey. yeah is like nationals are obviously like way higher skilled Mm -hmm. and like there are millions upon millions of people like a hundred or something that people that (laughs) that attend these tournaments so like when you go to a local and you have like a 20 something man bracket Mm -hmm. right some some weeks it's even less you go through you go through like and you like play your winners matches and you like probably play five sets that day but then like at a national you're playing like 12 sets and they're all really really hard Mm -hmm. so like go through like that kind of experience and like how that like i don't know like is different from like your normal thing and is how did you get you better at, like s- like even just like playing s- like being stressed perhaps about bracket like multi day too because you get to like think about pools and then the next day you're playing smash again you know well obviously there's a couple factors that go into you going really far into a bracket against a lot of really skilled strangers <laughs> um the first of which uh, the the biggest one i think for a lot of people is you know stamina and i really wish i had a better answer about it and from what I've heard from other people, not many people have a better answer other than just you have to keep doing it. And that eventually you just get better at uh, keeping your energy throughout the whole day. You know, you can do simple, obvious things like try to sleep well, eat well, and then go to the tournament. Um, but if you don't get those things, maybe it's a little harder. Um, that's obviously the first thing that goes in. I don't know if you have any thoughts on how to have better stamina at a tournament i mean like for it seems me so like so much more immutable like it's it's, it's not something like, you could focus on and have more stamina suddenly you know it's sort of like i don't know for me it's like they're like longer brackets i feel like stamina doesn't really exist in a sense because it's like you, people like go home and they like play 10 hours of friendlies against their friends all the time mm-hmm. no one gets fatigued of smash right it's just sort of like like to to always be disciplined enough to think about the set in a very intelligent way. Yeah. Like that can be draining, but I also think it's just like a matter of sometimes you just aren't aren't on. If you yeah. aren't on and your opponent is, then you you just lose most of the time. Mm-hmm. So like it's being able to be disciplined enough to keep that there and I think that the way that I do it is I sort of just like focus on the match next. You know, mm-hmm. like really get excited and look forward to like, "Oh man, I'm playing this person next." And like this is what I want to do. And if you're really engaged with it, that's how I do it. Yeah, that's okay. like my my version of stamina. Because I've definitely had a point in the past around 3.0 uh, Super Smash Sundays uh, time era that I would just at some point during the tournament hit a wall and I just suddenly have no energy and I just bomb. And I guess that sort of like physiological roadblock could be remedied by maybe just changing the way you think about the game to try to take a more thoughtful approach to it than a more energetic approach i don't know how to word this exactly i wish i mean I you have stamina now right yeah i do i don't have that problem any longer but i definitely did at one point and then i i don't remember any distinct time where it just went away i just uh got used to it maybe i just Getting got it got breaking. more used to playing the game in a more thoughtful way rather than just uh, the more thought you put in the more calm you remain the less you're gonna use up your body's strength and just your stamina in general I think that might be the best kind of answer you're going to get as far as that goes. And then um, 
to go on to the next uh, big topic is tournament nerves I wanted to talk about. Yeah, tournament which is something that you definitely experience at a national yeah. way more than Yeah, than you'll get local. tournament nerves at locals on special days when, you know, you're doing particularly well in bracket or you've, you're fighting someone that you're you... You're about to win against somebody that, like, you've never yeah. been before. A lot of anticipation. Uh, it's, you know, everyone says, smashes mostly your mindset rather than just tech skill. And I think everyone just get asks, I guess whatever words gets yeah. asked constantly about, you know, how do I not choke in tournaments? How do I um, keep control of my own mind and like pilot it rather than letting it, you know, sort of do snowball out of control. Um, and the best answer I've always come up with, and I'd be curious to hear what you have to say as well, um, is the short form answer is to think about something else. Uh, it sounds easier said than done, you know, how it always starts, and I'm sure anyone listening will recognize it, is that you'll go into a match that you're, you know, you're fighting against a PR player who you haven't beaten or something like that. And you're thinking about how maybe you really want to beat him and how you might feel if you were to lose. Uh, you're playing on stream maybe and you don't want to look like an idiot and you start <laughs> yeah. thinking about that. The match starts and you're down a stock. Maybe you're winning at first and maybe eventually you fall into a deficit. And then you start thinking about it. You start thinking about, <laughs> oh man, I'm messing up. I'm messing up all these texts. I'm going to look like an idiot in front of everyone. I'm going to lose this bracket and I have to go home. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm going to underperform Poor and you kid. just start spiraling out of control. I mean, this would happen to me in the past before I worked on it. And um, once you start, it's so hard to get it stopped. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like a progressive slope. It just gets harder and harder. And the way around it that I found was... Uh, I think this is, you know, an almost natural way that your mind will progress. If you're really anxious about something, you got to replace that habit with something else. Anyone who's quit smoking or knows someone who does, you'll find uh, a common strategy is to replace smoking with another habit. You know, anger management, you will sometimes replace uh, anger with some sort of constructive habit. And in my case, what I would do is I would just give myself things to think about about the match so I would never have to think about how I might look when or I the lose consequences or something. the consequences of the match, my expectations for the match. I would just think about the matchup. I'm going up against PR Mewtwo player who I've never beaten. Um, so let me think about the Mewtwo matchup. I got to remember to use down tilt in this situation. I got to remember to go really deep for backers to edge guard. I got to remember to DI the down throw right this way and watch out for the back throw mix up kind of thing. Um, just giving yourself something to think about helps a lot it's like it's it's sort of abstract but maybe a good example would be um maybe you're procrastinating on an assignment and this might feel familiar to everyone uh you're thinking like sort of panicked like uh my god like I, how am i gonna finish this i don't have enough time i'm gonna like fail the class i'm gonna fail this test maybe um but then maybe you'll have this realization that once you start actually working on the assignment and you're typing and you're spending your mental resources on pumping out the words in your essay and mm. trying to think of what to do next, you're not, you're no longer thinking about, oh my God, I'm going to fail this class. <laughs> now you're thinking on topic. Now your head's in the game and you sort of have to treat Smash the same way. Get your head in the game. Yeah. Just give yourself something else to think about. Replace it. You can't just not think about something. You got to think about something else instead. That's the best answer I can give as far as how to work on, um, not choking and just keeping a steady head and you know maybe if you get the jitters in a tournament set take a few minutes just start thinking of things between the matches while you're banning stages um obviously even if you have all this knowledge and you think it makes sense and this is all clicked with you somehow uh it's going to take practice before you really have the mental discipline to do this at will um really this is the best answer that i've ever come up with and i know a lot of people have solved it different ways i'm curious if you have yeah. any sort of solution did you ever struggle with I, tournament I, nerves i actually like there are certain random bursts mm -hmm. and i've actually like solved or not solved but like have dealt with tournament nerves in different ways and right. like to varying degrees of success or whatever so it's like i'm actually like like a really really jittery player mm -hmm. like when i'm like stressed i'm like super stressed and like my legs are like shaking right and like i like physiologically feel very like like under pressure and stuff 
So, like, two really big sets where I felt this was, like, against my set against Ally at Paragon, and then my oh. set my set against uh, Stereo Kid at Final Boss. Because, like, like for me, it's, like, a lot of it was just sort of, like, I really, really wanted to play them so bad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I really, really, like, wanted it. So, like, I was, like, it was, like, half, like, really stressed and half, like, really excited that, like, it was tough for me to deal with. So, like, I got super bodied by Stereo, and I, like, I, I like super bodied Ally. So, like... Like, it was, like, sort of, I I tried to sort of not really play outside the game like you do, like you, do, you know what I mean? I, I try to, like, play in that energy. Like, when I have, like, really stressful sets against, like, IPK or something, sometimes it's, like, I feel like it's really good to sort of, like, I don't know, like, like, like sometimes you feel like, because, like, if you, like, are super stressed to the point, like, you either, like, super crumble or, like, you, like, go to this zone where like you, I don't know. It's like like I think entering it's the zone. You know what I mean? To be stressed a little bit, or at least a little bit panicked. Mm. You gotta have some adrenaline going. Otherwise, mm. yeah. you're gonna play like it's friendlies. You're gonna play completely calm, and you're gonna flop. Mm. It's good to have like a little bit of butterflies and <laughs> a little bit of jitters. You know, yeah. just a bit. I think it makes you. If play you better. have too much, then you end up like having a panic attack, or you just like can't hit the buttons. Your hands are shaking. You know. Yeah. That's it's, like, it's super like, important what? to have a little. You That's only true. play your best when you're a little bit worried. Yeah, like when it when it starts like messing with your hands, it gets really crazy. But yeah. when it's like all in your brain and stuff, like sometimes you like hit something well, and like like you also have like this moment when you realize, wait a second, like the person next to me is also really really stressed, mm-hmm. and I, I I really like playing in that environment where I know that the person I'm playing against <laughs> is super stressed. It's almost calming. You become less stressed <laughs> knowing your opponent's freaking out. Oh yeah. Like, I was playing against Aki at Olympus, and I was, like, feeling, like, really bad. But then, like, I would, like, notice him, like, doing little things, and I'm like, oh, my God, he's, like, feeling, like, really, really bad, too. Like, he missed, like, two L cancels in a row. Yeah. Like, rolled three times. Or just, oh, he's choking. Yeah, or just, like, looking or just like looking out of the corner of your eyes, like, he's, like, wiping his, like, you know, his, like, sweaty palms on, like, his, like, his pants or something. Oh and, like, you play, you play, and you're like, okay, I'm playing really sloppy, but he's also playing really sloppy, and if I push him... That means that, like, I can maybe come out on top. And, like, you can really feel the players playing against each other in those really high-stress moments. You know, when, so, when you're playing against someone who's really calm, it's really, really hard to turn their momentum against themselves. Mm-hmm. But, like, sometimes, like, when you're in a high-stress situation, it works both ways. And you can use, use it against other people. Yeah. I think another part uh, on the same topic of tournament nerves is the crowd. Oh. And this is, like, a oh. classic that many people have handled different ways or not handled at all <laughs> yeah. um as far as you know the crowd can be really distracting first of all just like the sensory just noise you can hear these things constantly maybe they're chanting your name mm-hmm. and there's this sort of sort of like uh, knee-jerk reaction anyone has like if i say jason or if i say courtney mm-hmm. where you just like can't help but like you divert wanna... your attention for a mm-hmm. moment yeah. to that maybe they're chanting your name maybe it's just really loud and you can't hear the television very well Maybe it's you know just hearing the the, the, the crowd behind you howl uh, and and shout is uh, reminding you of just like what's at stake you know, um, and uh, I've seen all people deal with this in so many different ways and I think they're all really interesting. I think the hardest thing to do is like when when you have like the crowd behind you. But like you, what has been winning you the game has been really patient, controlled play. Mm-hmm. To hear people go, yeah, one more stop, let's go, let's go, and you really, your heart really wants to go in, but you have, you have to. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm sure that you've been, Mock, you're like this kind of player. It's like when people chant your name, you want to, but you know that you can't. You're like, I'm sorry, fans, but like I really have to just like camp back airs until he's at a crouch cancel percent or like something yeah, I, just and that's try really... to keep, I just try to keep my head in the game I don't try to have some especially no internal dialogue with my oh, fans that's, well, that's, that's what happens to me so, there's like this push and pull and maybe that's how come you do you're way more consistent than I am maybe yeah. but um I wanted to talk about a few solutions people have Go to the it. crowd uh one is obviously the common one you listen to music mm-hmm. while you play I've never been able to do this very well because I'm like a musician normally and I make music in my free time, I end up listening to music and trying to dissect it a lot. And I'm like, I could use this kind of idea in one of my songs or something like that. So that's always been really distracting to me. When I list, play listening to music, even in friendlies, I do terrible, like twice as bad. I like um, listening to music one in one set 
against some guy, I lost horribly, and I've never, never done it. Like, <laughs> Plus, I like to hear the game. Ivysaur has like a lot of sort of rhythmic, multi-hit <laughs> moves, and I want to be able to hear them. It's sometimes you know your opponent will do something, and you won't quite catch it. And you want to hear mm-hmm. maybe that they started charging a move off screen. Yeah. Um, another thing that's not so common, I've seen people carry around sort of three point five five millimeter audio splitters. Oh, that's really weird. Yeah. Baseball uh, does that. Yeah, face roll does that. Uh, Mike Hager from I think Sweden does that as oh, well. Yeah. Uh, they sort of we all play on CRTs with these little AC adapters, and you can find these uh, adap- these these mm. cables are still, like at Best Buy, Radio Shack. They're all over the place. You can buy them online, really cheap usually. Um, they'll just plug it in to the TV, so and they'll put on the headphones, and it'll all be connected. So they're hearing the game audio in their headphones and it's much louder and it's drowning out the crowd more. And I feel like that's a really good solution. If I was going to do anything, maybe I would do that. It just seems really cumbersome to have to have to carry around headphones and your splitters constantly. Um, I think I'm going to get this wrong, but I want to say that there is some old story about, I want to say silent wolf. I'm going to go at the risk of being um, okay, wrong, being Telling I- immortally lies. wrong yeah. on a podcast <laughs> so it was either him or some other melee player uh used to have nerves uh about you know being watched and playing on stream and that kind of thing so what he did was he would just start streaming all of his friendlies he would just stream everything that he did playing smash and then eventually the idea of someone watching him play or a lot of people watching him play um just became normal became noise to him it was just nothing you know that's another interesting solution that i haven't heard very often another is just you know you learn to deal with it or you don't you yeah. just kind of don't put on headphones you don't do any exercising with like you know putting your um yourself on stream constantly um i mean instead you just try to try to learn how to work out your mental discipline and zone it out and focus on the game. Well, it's funny that you mentioned zone it out because I do think that there are a lot of players that play really well. David comes to mind. Like, yeah, that's like another They play to talk a about. lot better when they with know the that. With the crowd. With the crowd. <laughs> sometimes you know? it's hard to say if it's him playing better or his opponent choking because of the crowd because sometimes it's hard to discern. Exactly. And I do think that like leaning, leaning into that is another thing you can do. I, that's a situation at Nationals that happens like a lot where it's like the hometown hero will like be like, up and like they're getting cheered for and then like you're like okay they're they're cheering for their guy so if i like fuck him up right now and and shut him up that'll make that other guy feel really really bad or something like that like (laughs) i don't know like i actually i play out outside of the game a lot more than it seems that you do like i definitely do think about like the stock lead and stuff like this how i can push and pull like how my opponent is feeling and if i make him feel really bad no play worse right Mm -hmm. like sometimes like you do suboptimal things just to like freak him out or like you do things for like to like shut up the crowd or like to get your own crowd to help him out and Mm -hmm. stuff like that and i do think that that's another way you can lean into it it's a little less refined you know you can backfire and you just get fucked up (laughs) but like i don't know like they're the crowd is a resource just like anything else in the game yeah you know and you can't help it either. You, you definitely can't go to the TOs mm-hmm. and complain about the crowd and tell them to stop it. Mm-hmm. Unless That's you're not so happening. sad and complaining about dual monitors yeah. or something stupid. Um, I wanted to mention Lunchables is actually a good example of this kind of topic you brought up because I feel like one of his formative moments in his Smash career was Low Tier City, uh, no, uh, Aftershock. Where he fought uh, IPK, IPK, and IPK is just like popping off. The crowd was going nuts. Yeah, because everyone in SoCal was like super loud. Yeah, in the crowd. Lunchables historically handles the crowd very poorly, and after that event, uh, he like really choked when the crowd was going nuts during that set. Um, eventually, he came to this sort of realization slash he wanted to test it out for himself. He's like, I'm gonna play like IPK. When the crowd cheers, I'm gonna like pop off. And maybe just, you know, mm. fake it till you make it. He tried it, and then um, I remember the tournament that he ended up attempting it at and just sort of, like, harnessing the energy of the crowd mm-hmm. shamelessly, just sort mm. of, like, yelling and stuff like that, that he did really well. <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. It's, a, it's a neat oh solution. Oh, my God. The, uh, he just went oh. on both sides of the, uh, the whole crowd concern. Yeah, and I do think, like, like this is tangentially really because I feel like a lot of this does play a lot more 
like it's more relevant at nationals and stuff because that that is like the, the overall topic. Bigger crowds, bigger expectations. Yeah, and I do think that the player to player sort of mentality struggles is really important because, like, dude, if someone pops off next to me, I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, I get like super distracted. So that's like a really good strategy. I actually like um, mid game. It motivates like, me. Even like mi- yeah, mm-hmm. mid game or like between games, like oh my fucking god, you know, like you have like I like I don't I don't tune it all out. I like take it all in, and hopefully it ends up like. Becoming Building something up good. rather than crumbling. Yeah, but I mean, I, I ride the wave either way, you know. Yeah. Sometimes it fucks me. For all of my ability to sort of, like, try to focus on the game pretty hard, I feel like popping off has the uh, reverse effect on me. If someone pops off against me while I play them, I'm like, I'm like fuck this guy. Who does he think he is? And then I, like, try harder, and I usually do better. <laughs> because I hate them now. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Harnessing been a the power lot of, of hatred. Yeah, there's oh, like, yeah. been so many Teach times where, like, lessons. yeah, this guy's, like, Popping off, it's like he's won game one and it's a best of five. It's like, come on, man. Who the fuck are you? I'm, I'm like, just you didn't, you didn't win yet. And then I like <laughs> lean in and do better. It's like motivating almost. Yeah. And oh my god. Oh, I love high stress smash. That's like, that's like my, one of my favorite things about nationals too. Mm-hmm. Is you play your most stressful sets at nationals and like your stressful ones are your memorable ones. Oh my god. It's such a, like, an, an exciting moment, almost unique to smash, is just the intensity of how fast the game is and the, how many things you could mess up. I've gotten really into TF2 and Overwatch uh, and gotten pretty good at them, but none of them give you the same kind of... Um, Real? The sa- <laughs> yeah, the same kind of like really intense thrill that Smash does because they're a lot slower paced. They're not as technically demanding. Smash, when you're playing like grand finals against someone and you're both at last stock... Like last hit, the sort of it's just it's just so. It's it's such a unique sort of feeling that you're like you're Stress. you're now you know you realize that you're thinking like way smarter than you usually are. <laughs> yeah. You're like recognizing all sorts of options that you wouldn't have considered before. It's it's amazing when you have sets like that that really just like push you and you're playing at your best and your opponent is too. Those are some of the best sets ever. I know. Ah. Uh. Oh man, nationals are great. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, let's go to the to our last topic because it will pivot into if people want to go to these things. How how what is the smartest way to go about it? I think that's that's like a pretty mm-hmm. reasonable topic to end so on. So planning. People yeah. that are riding that that hype right now. Yeah. So I guess there are the way I see it. There's there's four main costs for uh, going to majors. Okay. One of them is obviously. Uh, the registration fees. The registration fees for majors will be as low as ten dollars, and sometimes up to like thirty dollars. Yeah, and then maybe and then, yeah. Depending on the number of brackets you uh, enter, you could those will just stack on top of each yeah. other. Another is uh, transportation, uh, which is really the the biggest part of the cost for many people. Either flying or carpooling. Yeah, carpooling, going to a six hour away tournament by car, like from us driving to Arizona. Excuse me, Arizona or NorCal is going to be like, like 20, 30 bucks. Maybe. Gas. I mean, usually I've ended up paying like around 10 as long as we fit a bunch of people into one car mm-hmm. and we just split the cost. Um, usually, car is really cheap. I know one of my drives to Texas, maybe even both of them, I don't remember distinctly what each price was, uh, cost me like $60 round trip, which yeah. is, which is, peanuts compared to like a 300 you know, dollar plane ticket yeah <laughs> plane tickets will go if you're really lucky like almost a hundred dollars 105 is like maybe the lowest i've found for i've like never found anything yeah like. yeah <laughs> that, and that's really lucky the next uh, highest is probably like 150 but usually you can ex- you can expect to pay around like 200 dollars give or take you know 50 yeah sometimes if you if it's depending really on where you're flying yeah, obviously if it's if a you're really flying cross country flight, right then it could be like three hundred yeah. or more. Um, so that's another cost. Uh, you gotta got to consider like how far it is yeah. if you can manage to take the car if you have a ride. Um, also, food that's obviously is the, the other thing. Yeah. You it'll maybe take like what twenty five dollars a day to f- keep yourself alive. <laughs> that's a lot of money in a day to keep yourself alive, but yeah, like I mean, it, you can go less than that. You can go more than that true. if you really want to spend a lot of money for some reason. <laughs> um, and then the last is uh, housing. And uh, housing, luckily for Smashers, you can usually manage to get it for free. 
Uh, there's usually like uh, if, people if that SoCal are willing is, to play yeah, Smash. If SoCal is hosting a major, there's usually people in the area that are willing to you know let you crash on their couch for the for the short duration. Usually it's only around like uh, two to five days that you'll be gone at max from pretty much any event. All things considered, um, I, I also you know in addition to crashing at someone's house you can potentially sleep in the car it's not very common but i've seen it happen a few times that's free uh <laughs> sounds miserable to me i wouldn't be not i would not i don't be able know to about sleep in a car. sleeping in a car and then pulling that's yeah, no. really annoying <laughs> yeah. usually these kind of people end up showing up late and they don't get to sleep mm-hmm. um and then there's you know getting a hotel which a lot of the times is pretty much your only option uh i don't really i try to avoid going to hotels because those tend to be pretty expensive for my taste oh dude i love hotels how much do you guys usually spend uh, splitting a room between so probably many like 40 dollars for the trip per person or something like that yeah i've I, done a lot of hotels yeah i I've done a lot of both actually. i remember evo cost me like 80 dollars to split that hotel room. We're like man this is way more than i thought it would be yeah i mean hey dude you're in vegas baby mm-hmm. yeah it is yeah it's uh, so all, all those things summed up, you can get, you know, a trip to a regional in like around $70, $80, $60, $70. With that much in your pocket, you can probably cover an entire regional if you're lucky. Yeah. And you got everything, you know, you got the free housing and whatnot. Um, otherwise, it could cost a couple hundred if you're going out of region for a really big tournament and you need a hotel room and whatnot because all the it's so large that all the local housing has been snatched up by the yes the top I, player privilege. i do think that that's something that's really important is to ask for housing early yeah there are, smashers are huge ass procrastinators so if you are literally just like a bare minimum not a procrastinator <laughs> then, then then you just ask a guy for a house and they'll like oh okay yeah you'll be fine yeah and this is where the whole social networking of going out to to these majors makes going out to more majors easier because then you make a lot of friends there you yeah. will make friends with many of the people that you play against and see yeah. out of state and then next time they'll be willing to house you more yeah, likely smash is so cool because it's like you have to play games against people that are there so you just naturally are forced to socialize yeah you know? that's something i appreciate about it, smash because you see a lot of clips of people who play online games professionally and they'll just act like clowns outside of it or they're yeah. like really awkward but in smash is really no Everyone's way around so nice. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've got to... The really mean people, the really salty people end up getting filtered out a lot of the time because you got to look the person in the eyes and shake their hand when you're done playing them, you know? <laughs> it doesn't really fly when you scream at them or shit talk them the way that you might be able to online. <laughs> um, yeah, that's as far as planning goes, right? Other than that, you just need to make sure to bring your controller <laughs> and maybe like blankets. Oh, God, not bring your controller. That's always like my biggest heart attack i'm like i'm unpacking my things like where's my controller where's my controller <laughs> uh, and then it's at the bottom like oh thank God. yeah yeah some sometimes some people just can't you know adjust the controllers very well yeah. sometimes people do forget their controllers i remember it happens to to kenny when oh, we went to yeah. i think i don't even know what tournament i just remember like 30 minutes after we left he's like i forgot my controller and we're like, we'll, we'll work something out. Like, <laughs> you'll borrow one of ours. <laughs> you can walk back. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> um, yeah. Was there anything else you guys wanted to add on that topic in particular? Because otherwise we could move into story time. <laughs> well, I would say, like, planning-wise, like, definitely something that, like, everyone will tell people to do and no one will actually do is, like, planning early. Especially as a T.O., like, I'm the person everybody comes to with, like, trying to get their plans done. Yeah. And, like, obviously, the first come, first serve on a lot of stuff. Like, I mean, especially, like, housing at the bow. Like, for most regionals or, like, like events that we're not doing. Like, bigger bow, bigger bow is, or, like, the big bow series is basically the only one where, like, I have people ahead of time who are, like, taking up that space. Like, I'll just yeah. dispense you across but local um, housing is first come first serve yeah i definitely yeah like i don't think oh god it's like the stupidest thing that like people wait so last second for that stuff and then they're like oh why didn't it work out yeah <laughs> but yeah no so definitely like being early um flight wise i can definitely say google flights is you can literally yeah. just google 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 flights yeah. and that that is like i regularly saved use google flights because like i have to terms. like like especially like last year i did five flights this year we're doing nine flights so i'm like juggling like a bunch of different people and trying to figure out like the cheapest way and like all that stuff and google flights makes that like super yeah. easy it has a really handy mm-hmm. uh sort of function where it's the show flexible dates yeah where you can it shows this grid of start date and uh 
the part date, you know, for this um, trip. And you can see all the possibilities for, you know, mixing it up like three or four days in each direction. And you can see maybe one of them has dropped a hundred dollars in price. Just <laughs> if you if you leave one day later, it's like absolutely gonna take that. Yeah. Um, Google Flight's really good. There's probably a lot of other websites, but that's really the only one I've that's ever used. That's the one I've only used too. Like it's just so easy because you usually just like put in the airport you're like coming from and going to, and like assumes round trip. I guess you can like edit that. Sometimes you could even <laughs> put in like a, a, a region. Oh yeah, you can like, put I in wanna, just, like wanna, vague places. I want to fly <laughs> to California or Southern California, and there's like a ton of airports here. Yeah. There's more than just LAX. LAX is usually the cheapest, but yeah. in other states whose airports I don't really know. A lot of the times you'll find something cheaper. Sometimes you could even combine these travel options. Uh, for Super Bit Wars, I flew to Texas and then drove up to Oklahoma with the Texas people, because flying to Oklahoma was like two, three hundred dollars. The flights to Texas was one hundred dollars. Whoa! So I just flew to Texas and drove the like four hour drive up. Oh, and that was right. easy. It's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> so it's also something to consider if you have any friends that are in a different area that you can possibly drive up with. Yeah. Also, coordinate with your region. That's, like, super big, I think. Yeah. Where it's like, uh, if you're just some random guy and you're like, uh, I want to go to this tournament, how do I do it by myself? The answer is don't you, do it by yourself. You don't do it by yourself. <laughs> you, like, talk to, like, the people. You talk to your locals and you try to get a lot of people to go. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like, both flights and carpools, it's like, usually, like, someone will post, like, yo, flights are really cheap right now. Like, yeah, who wants to go? Yeah, Make and, a Facebook chat. Yeah, and then there's also with carpools, which is another thing, first come, first serve, don't procrastinate, like, or... Or have oh yeah, carpools are a precious resource. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, like trying to like get as many people in the right car, like roughly close to each other. Yeah, yeah. that's like probably the most common way I've done it. I don't actually think I've flown yeah. anywhere for a smash. Yeah. I mean, like as far as housing goes, if you don't find any local housing, you end up getting a hotel. If you can't find a carpool to go to a tournament with, you might not go. You know. <laughs> It's sort of it, if SoCal is going up to NorCal for a tournament, it's limited by how many carpools are willing to drive up. If you're willing to drive up, you're a, you're a hero to many people. Mm -hmm. You'll yeah, absolutely get your entire trip paid for. <laughs> like, at least as far as gas goes. Yep. And then housing tends to be, ba like, oh, and another thing actually on the carpool, which is kind of what we already talked about, but um, just making posts. Like, I yeah, know for whatever reason, page. yeah, like, for a bigger bulk even, because I'm just in a stupid amount of, like, regional groups, is, like, a lot of people already, like, even though it's, like, like half a year away, well, it was at the time, like, People are already making, like, hey, like, who wants to go? Like, let's start, like, thinking about it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, like, even if you're, like, not 100% sure, just, These like... These people are going to have it secure. Yeah, just throwing out the idea that you might want to go and, like, figuring out who else might want to go. Because a lot of time, like, especially, like, for me and I guess the people I hang out with are all just like, yeah, maybe I'll go to that. And, mm -hmm. like, just getting that topic going, like, kind of makes it more and more, like, actually, like, likely to happen. Whereas if you don't talk about it at all, it's like, oh, yeah, that event happened, and it's, like, a week away, and I'm not going anymore because, like, I didn't even think about it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But, yeah, I guess that kind of covers just about all planning, unless anybody else has any other last second. Bring blankets. Oh, yeah. my God. Bring pillows and bring blankets. Bring pillows. <laughs> blankets especially because those can double as a, a pillow, pillow if need be. Especially for Or a mattress if you have enough blankets. Especially if you're crashing at a smash pad. Oh yeah. If you are not getting, if you're not getting a hotel, please, please, please bring blankets and pillows. Even if you're going to a hotel, dude, I've had times where like I've shared hotels with like, like, like at Genesis, like, like, like a week ago, we had I want to say eight people or yeah, seven or eight people in that room, and there's only two beds, so only four people were sleeping on beds, so we all had to rotate. And it's yeah. like, well, if you don't have pillow and blankets, uh, make sure gee, you bug. make That's sure you know floor. where you're staying and who's taking what. <laughs> yeah, well, usually rotating. I mean, I obviously talk about it. All Communication. Right. We've rambled yeah. enough about this. Mm -hmm. You want to do one last thing before we call it quits? Yeah, I guess we can each just share a good story about traveling. All right. <laughs> Corey, or, you or, can... or actually, let's just have Corey do it. I, I'm pressed on time. I have okay. nothing to say unless you want one. No, I'm, I'm going to okay. skip my turn. No, no, no. Corey. Corey has a good so fucking story. So bring us home with one last story. <laughs> so this is the Arlo 2 trip, and uh, many people already know it. This is the, the trip that I alluded to earlier. We mentioned, uh, okay, so Arlo 2 is... All roads lead to Oklahoma, too. It's this uh, regional that was in Oklahoma. Some of us in SoCal decided, hey, why not? Let's go to it. We've never been to Oklahoma. It seems like a fun, small tournament to go to. Um, it was uh, the planned carpool was uh, Teals, who was driving his mom's car uh, as the driver. 
uh, myself, Red Ranger, and Yo. Um, and we all live in SoCal, and so uh, me and Teals live nearby each other uh, in Orange County. So day comes around, it's time to leave. Uh, he picks me up, we start <laughs> heading over to go get Red Ranger up in Pomona. He's like about 30 minutes away. And maybe like three minutes before we get to his house, we've gotten off the freeway. We're just heading over to his house. Um, some lady rear ends us like pretty hard. Uh, and we end up pulling over and she's very angry about it. And uh, we ended up actually rear ending a person in front of us just from the force of the first car. So we got like three cars pulled over on the side. Everyone's fighting. And what a great the start. The police <laughs> show up and the car is looking kind of banged up. I was like, man... It's kind of a bummer. It's looking like we might not go, you know? Um, but we've done all this planning, and we're already out here. We really want to go, so we're like, you know what? Screw it. We'll, we'll go. Uh, and we ended up continuing on our way. With um, the same car? Yeah. It just uh, got fucked up in your... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It what wasn't, it wasn't my call. If anyone, it was Mickey's call. Fucking Mickey, what the fuck? Okay. I mean, it was just the bumper was a little messed up. You know, the front wasn't too you, bad. You described it as you were in the middle of a three-car, like, <laughs> it, technically it was. hit you with so much force that you rear-ended the other car. I'm just imagining this fucked up Little Miss Sunshine car. It, it, the car was fucked up. <laughs> but it was, you could drive it. And, and, and we were determined. <laughs> you were, like, literally, like, ten minutes out or something like that. Like, yeah. You weren't even out of California yet. Okay. Well, and then we, so Cal yet. And then we pick up Red Ranger. <laughs> He was three minutes away from the crash site. Um, and uh, he's oh like, what took God. so long? He's like, check our bumper. And he's like, oh. <laughs> and we get in and we start driving to uh, Yo's place in Van Nuys, which is quite far. We eventually pick him up. And then we head on our way, start uh, heading on this, what is it, 18-hour ride. Hour to... one of 18 hours. <laughs> the car is fucked. Yeah. Are but we, we thought it was just like an, some external damage. So we continued on our way. Uh, oh. we, we thought. Yeah, we thought. <laughs> Which means. We, we thought. Uh, at some point in Arizona, the next state over, obviously, uh, we need to stop for gas for the first time. It's always a good idea to stop for gas when you're out of, this, out of California. Because California gas is expensive. So we stop for gas. Uh, as we're pulling in to the gas station, Red Ranger makes a comment like, do you hear something dragging? And I'm like, no. But I guess we'll find out when we uh, when we get to this parking oh, yeah. lot. <laughs> what could yeah. it be? We get to the parking lot, and the bumper is actually hanging off of the car. Uh, it's been dragging on the, on the street for I don't know how long. We're like, okay, well, I guess our two options are either remove it or reattach it. We can't reattach it. It's like the bolt is gone. It's like starting to erode from just the friction of the road. Um, and we can't detach it either. We have no tools. It's just stuck like this. We're like, what do we do? Um, we try There was a trailer park nearby, and we tried to, like, find help there. Did not work. They didn't like us. Uh, the every Every place was closed. This was, like... I don't know. It was very late at night. There were, there were no places that we could go to purchase like a bungee cord. But eventually someone came by and, and lent us a bungee cord. But before that ended up happening, we ended up uh, using the only sort of rope that we had on us, which is a uh, dental floss. We le- okay. okay. We le- you, had- you call dental floss rope? It's the closest thing that we had. What does that we tell used you? dental floss to tie it on and it worked. And eventually we got a bungee cord, which we tied just to, to the to the bumper and then to the back seat, and that held it in place longer. The the Long the, longer. the uh the dental floss actually lasted the whole trip as well. Uh like it, it <laughs> remains intact. So uh we continue on our way. We've just filled up the car and fixed the bumper, more or less. And uh <laughs> we realized the fuel gauge is like already at half. We've been driving for half an hour. What happened? Um, oh no. And then we, <laughs> we keep going and then the fuel gauge goes up to full and we're like, okay, uh, maybe it's just like an old car. And then it goes back to half again. We're like, uh Oh, so what happened, I guess this accident took us a long time to notice, or it took a long time for this glitch to manifest. The fuel gauge no longer works. We can't tell how much fuel we have in the car or not. So the best option we have to go with at this point, uh, now that we're fully committed, is <laughs> to use the like trip mile counter. 
we decided, <laughs> all right, a full tank is like 320 miles. So once we reach around like 300 or something. What the fuck? No, it's once you reach like 200 or something. Sorry. <laughs> right. I forget In the, the numbers. middle of nowhere. It's like, oh, but we have about 15 miles left to the game. We want to get gas. We want to get gas before it's 300. Yes. Um, and so we work with that. We're, and, it, and it's working pretty well. We eventually at like 6 a.m. It's freezing out. The sun is just coming up. We're on this two-lane highway, and there's a semi on our right, and it's moving very slow. So the kind of thing we want to do is to like pass it. We yeah. want to overtake it. So we get over to the left, and we start to overtake it, and suddenly these orange pylons start appearing on the road. And they're the kind of things that looked like if we hit it with our car, it would go flying into next week. Yes. Um, but this semi next to us either didn't care about us or didn't want to slow down or didn't notice. Uh, and we only barely made it in front of that guy. By, by just laying on the uh, pedal. Uh, we mostly made it by that guy because we ended up hitting one of those pylons and instead of us destroying it, it knocked off our left side mirror. What? Yeah, it knocked it off like a loose tooth. It was just going... <laughs> like <laughs> bumping against the side of the car. And so what we had to do... Um, Red Ranger was driving at the time and he felt so guilty <laughs> he, we, we rolled down the window we held it in place in the freezing cold and drove to the nearest gas station to get this thing fixed and this was so cold i was in the back right seat the furthest seat away from this window and i was so cold i had to like sit on my hands and they were still freezing i it, it must have been super painful for poor red who was holding it yeah outside oh, it was no. it was horrible i feel so bad um up until this point, I had been like keeping a humorous Facebook post alive with updates on the unfortunate things happening. But once this happened, I stopped because it just got depressing. <laughs> um, People didn't need to know. <laughs> yeah. So we got to a place. We got duct tape. We fastened it on the best we could. It could. It no longer showed us a good view of what was on our left and behind us. <laughs> but it was attached to the car, and it wasn't going to dent the car further by flopping around. Uh, and we continued on our way. Uh, <laughs> How Let's, far are you guys at this point? This is in <laughs> New Mexico. And then oh my we god, you're not even in Texas yet. No. <laughs> yeah, and we continue driving. Um, <laughs> the next thing to happen was this sort of 320 mile estimate has been working pretty well for us so far. Um, <laughs> Over the past 200 miles. Yeah, so it, it, I don't know how many miles oh it had been god. at that point, but we had filled it like once or twice okay, at this okay. point. Uh, and actually now we're getting into Texas, uh, and we decided, we saw the trip counter was at like 280 miles. This was my turn driving and, uh, decided, okay, 280, that's like 40 miles until our estimated empty. So let's go and find a gas station. And there wasn't one for the next 41 miles. Oh my God. Oh God. We actually ran out of gas Oh. right next to a sign that said like one mile until the next gas station. <laughs> So we like stopped, we're like, okay, we got some water bottles. We went and walked, walked? all the way to it. Water in the, bottles? Yeah, well, we stay, had water bottles. It was really oh, hot. Oh, I thought you meant to put the gas in. I no, we're like, in the middle uh... of the desert and it's hot as balls. We just had to get these water bottles. We walked over in the heat, fought off giant insects. Um, and in the meantime, Mickey is back at the car explaining the situation to his mother at this oh point. My oh my god. god. Mickey. So, Mom, we, we destroyed the car. Uh, <laughs> uh, we get to the gas station. Those little canisters they sell for exactly this kind of purpose are like $20. So we're That's like, how they you, get know you. What, you know what else is like a gallon of gas? And we took a, we bought a one gallon jug of water and poured it out and just filled that with gasoline and carried it back. Turns out, <laughs> turns out gasoline is uh, green. Uh, oh, it, my God. Took feels... it back and made a funnel out of a water bottle, poured it into the car. Um <laughs> Drove to the gas station for real and continued on our way. I was like, okay, this is like, we've hit every base so far. Like, as far as bad road trip things yes. go, we've gotten the accident. You're done. The, yeah, everything's done. And uh, I'm still driving at this point. Uh, there is like no one around in any direction. It's just a barren two-lane interstate thing. Uh, and I see a police car uh, come over in the horizon, oh, way back God. in the distance. And, uh, and he's really booking it. And I'm like, this guy, like, apparently has to get somewhere fast that's, like, a state away. So I, like, pull I, I pull into the right lane to let him pass me. And he uh, switches into the right lane. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. 
his lights come on and I'm thinking, okay, Optimus here, maybe it's because our car looks like garbage and it's falling apart. Maybe this is why he's pulling us over. He pulls us over and he gives me a speeding ticket for $300 for, um, for going 15 miles over the speed limit. It was like I was going 90 in a 75 zone. It isn't even that bad considering there was like literally no human beings or civilization around in either direction. Uh, the guy actually uh, tried like ripping off our bumper. <laughs> when he tried to kick shit. Yeah, he like tried to yank it off. It's like, this is our car. You can't just yank when parts he just off. He wanted it. to do it. Yeah, he's like, it, 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 why is this broken? You gotta take this off. And he like tried to pull it off, but it's bolted on, so it didn't work. <laughs> and uh, he was just generally not a super cool dude. At some point, like, he, he gave me the whole spiel about, you know, you could, uh, do, you could show up in court if you wanna, you know, contest this thing uh and i'm like i live in southern california is that like a problem like do, what do i have what does that mean for me showing up to court and whatnot he's like it's not my problem and i'm like all right well, uh, <laughs> thanks thanks for your help officer and then we left and we ended up at that point i don't think unless i'm forgetting something no other terrible things happened and we um <laughs> We got to the, the place that, that we were being housed by. This 18-hour trip took 24 hours. Um, oh, my God. That's yeah, way it was, it was That's, horrible. like, a lot longer than you're expecting. Yeah, there was... I've been on a lot of road trips, and uh, most of them are... This was nothing like the many nominal, just nothing happens road trips. I mean, we, Every, everything you had and caught I alone up with, have had a lot of good road trips where all, stupid shit yeah. happens. All of my luck had caught up with... Uh, or all of our luck, had caught up with us in one trip, apparently. The way back was eventless. Mm -hmm. We just drove, got gas, drove, got gas, and then we were there, you know? But, yeah, that's the uh, Arlo 2 story. That's the last time I drove to Oklahoma. <laughs> I ended up going back for another tournament. I did not drive Dude, that ended, time. The worst part is it ended up costing you more <laughs> yeah. because of the ticket and all of the stupid shit. Yeah, my God. That's, that's the uh, worst road trip I've ever been on. That's the story. Well, if that doesn't get you excited to travel, <laughs> I don't know what will. <laughs> Great stories. So, uh, we're going to wrap today up. Thanks mm -hmm. for being here, Corey. Thanks for having me. It was fun. We'll be back in two weeks yeah. with another topic. And there should, in fact, be a Bowcast offset next week featuring... Uh, Blanksy. Yeah, Adrian of Team Bowk. And then he's going to be talking to um, one of the TOs in charge of the Midwest Circuit and also Marshall. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we're talking to Midwest people for next week. That's about crazy. Midwest stuff. Ooh, I wonder what it's going to be. Like Oklahoma. But anyway, <laughs> have a good one, everybody. Later.